check that out. Now that's foreign to me right there. Let's see if Jeremy can teach us how this works. Okay, let's go over how a clutch works real quick. Matt and I just took this apart, had a great idea. Some of you may know, some of you may not. Let's go over and see how it works. So the simple basic components, throw out bearing, pressure plate, clutch disc right here, flywheel, and then you're gonna have a pilot bearing here, which we do not have. It could be a bushing or a bearing, but it goes here. It's still in the engine. So but this is your main components. This right here on a manual transmission is pretty heavy, always is. It's where your clutch disc rides and it sits right here so it spins around whenever it needs to go forward. Very heavy, can't even pick it up. Here's your disc. If you notice the disc is different on either side. It'll always go like this because if you turn it around, you may think it's gonna fit, but there's bolts here that hold this to the engine. It won't work. It'd be a bad day when you started it up after you put it all together. It wouldn't be not, would not be happy. Bolting it down would be a big pain in the butt, I'm sure. These little springs right here are for when your engine is running. Say you have an eight cylinder, say you have a four cylinder, six cylinder. Every time that part spark plug fires, the engine's gonna jerk just a touch, just a touch, just a touch, just a touch. And on a diesel engine, it's really, really bad. So, cause it goes pow, pow, it's just, it's just kind of more violent. So these little springs right here, when you go to let the clutch out, they take up a lot of the vibration and the energy from that, that engine vibrating as it turns like this, as it goes around. So if you had a V8, you know, every time it turns, it's gonna fire, what, four times every time the thing turns around? If I, yeah, it's gonna fire four times every time the crankshaft spins. If you had a four cylinder, it's gonna fire twice, because it, you know, it has to spin twice for all that to work. But moral story being a four stroke. So these little springs right here uh, take up a lot of the energy when you're letting your clutch out. So if you were to take your foot off the clutch and you didn't have these springs, you would feel this, every time the piston fired, technically, you would feel a thump, 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 thump and the car would shake, 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 shake every single time the piston fired. Hypothetically, but that's what this is right here. This makes drivability of letting the clutch out that much better. So that's what the springs are for, if you didn't know. Now this big heavy monster sits on top. This is the pressure plate, and this is your throwout bearing. Your throwout bearing, if you have a setup like this, it's always gonna have this right here. There's tons of different types of throwout bearings. So somebody's gonna be like, mine looks nothing like that. Well, I understand that. There's internals and all kinds of different things. If you go out on the, the 2.6 thing or whatever that came out of the Manchi, it's totally different as well. Here's a throw out bearing, or throw out bearing, the clutch pivot fork, clutch fork. This sits on here and this pushes it up and down like it's supposed to as your clutch engages, like that right there. So this pushes here and these fingers right here, these little spring fingers right here, they get pushed down. And in the process of those getting pushed down, we'll flip this big heavy dude up. So when this gets pushed down, these fingers right here move towards the center. That's where this guy pushes up. And keep in mind here, this is a bearing. This spins. Because this is stationary while it's hooked to the transmission like so. It's stationary and this spins. So when you have your clutch in and you're revving your engine up or anything like that, this is spinning really fast right here. So this is taking all the brunt of the load. So it's sitting on these fingers. All this spins at this point. So, and as these fingers right here move up, because this is lifting in or pushing over, however you want to look at it, these fingers move up. Well, by doing that, this is a little cantilever. This big plate right here lowers. And you can see how it's attached right here on these, um, I don't know what you really call them. I don't know if you call them springs, springs. guides. I don't know if they're springs. They're just more of a guide plate. So this piece right here will go in and out, in and out. This piece here does. So as you push the clutch, this disc goes away from the flywheel. So, and then this stays stationary on the engine. 
And this stays stationary on the transmission. So when you push this in, this centerpiece is just riding on a collar. This starts spinning really fast, whatever engine RPM you're doing. And then it pushes on the spring fingers, which depresses the pressure plate right here, which then at that point allows for the clutch to spin freely because it's no longer sandwiched between these two giant pieces of metal. And that's what makes the vehicle move forward, anything like that. When these two are sandwiched together with that spring force, it sandwiches together. And this surface area right here is what does all the work. It squishes them together, takes your engine RPM, and relays it through right to this little guy. And this little guy is what transfers that engine RPM into the transmission. And when you let the clutch out, it starts to move forward. So when you press the clutch in, this guy right here quits spinning and it just rides in the center. And that's the basics on how a clutch works. Matt, what questions you got? So this guy right here is constantly spinning with the engine. Yeah, all of it spins. This big heavy monster lines up like this and all spins until you push the clutch in. So it all sits together like so. Can you see that? Yeah. So all of it's spinning like crazy. And it seems like crazy because all this weighs like 75 pounds, so there's a lot of weight there. And then you have your throwout bearing that sits right here and it pushes these springs in. And then by doing that, at that point, the clutch in the middle quits spinning and it just rests. It comes to a standing still. While, while all that's going on, the flywheel and the pressure plate are still spinning at whatever engine RPM you're going. And you're throw out bearing at that point to start to go. It just seems crazy to me that your axles, your gears, your tires, your wheels, and everything all get moved by that little piece of metal right there. Yeah, it is crazy. Think about like a giant semi truck. It's the same thing, just a little bit bigger. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's about a one inch piece of teeth, piece of metal. Yeah, spline. Yeah, yeah spline sp shaft. Spline. And there's these teeth in here and all that gets moved by just that little yeah. piece now keep in mind it's the way a clutch is and how a clutch starts to slip if you were to hit a point where it couldn't go anymore either a you're going to kill the engine or b your clutch is going to start to slip so but i agree with you that we break axle shafts that are that big around and drive shafts that are that big around why aren't we breaking that well there's gear reductions that get us to that and that's why we don't break this because all the gears in the transmission and the axles and the transfer case all that reduces back down to this little point because this thing spins at 6,000 rpm and our tires spin at two a two a two mile an hour so you get what i'm saying so there's a lot of gear reduction that get the 6,000 rpms back down that's why this little guy can hang out can hang out there cool Thank you, bro. No problem. There's tons of different clutch setups. This is just a down and dirty little setup. I was telling Matt about other little setups before we started this video. You can have race clutches that are this big and all kinds of different things. You can have big ones and big diesel clutches. They have dual mass flywheels and all kinds of crazy stuff. There's all kinds of different clutches out there. This is just a down and dirty on how an average clutch works. Next, we're going to get real scientific and talk about how an automatic transmission transfers that power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be for another day.